and welcome to another episode of Spilling the Tea. I'm Laura Perilla. And I'm Greg Barton. So today, what tea are we trying? So we're trying a tea from Smith Teas called Morning Light. It's a full leaf black tea with rosemary, black currant, and a pinch of cassia. And so that's what it is. I tend to think of it as a rosemary tea, and they only make it really for the holidays. So, like, so they, it comes out kind of once a year, and then it goes away again, and then it. So this so, is like a Thanksgiving, Christmas kind of blend. I think? think. I think so. Yeah. So rosemary, I do tend to think like rosemary and stuffing, and yeah, you know, all yeah. those savory applications. So, to have it as a tea would be interesting. Yeah, so the rosemary tea. And then you brought something for us to try yes. as well, right? Yeah, so. No, we have stuck to tea, but um, today we have tea biscuits. So these tea biscuits uh, came from Giant Eagle. They are Kedem brand. They're a product of Israel. <clears throat> You can find them in the kosher food section of your grocery store if they have them. But uh, they're just uh, little cookies you can have with your tea. And um, I, as you see, I've opened them already. I tried them because when you see things on clearance at Giant Eagle, you know, you got to try it <laughs> or else you won't get more of it at that price. So I tried these already. And what I thought was really fascinating about them is that when I dumped them in my tea, they didn't drip. Ah. Like they sucked up some of the tea, but they didn't drip like a lot of cookies, which just right. continue to drip. Yeah, and it's just a mess. Yes. It so they, makes a they mess. They seem to be fairly mess-free. So they're just little, they almost look like a cracker. But if you can see there, it says special tea stamped on every one of them so it's kind of a pun <laughs> like because they're a special tea cookie <laughs> special tea huh? special tea it's in cursive i like that yeah and so we have regular and uh chocolate so we'll try them both right should, should i try one of these should sure. we try them yeah we can try with, them with without any tea yeah try the tea and then we can dry biscuit kind of just like an animal cracker not quite as sweet i would say but yeah yeah mm -hmm. i think they didn't overly sweeten these which i think is good they didn't go mm -hmm. too far with the sugar and i think these will be very good with the tea yeah they would be good with coffee too i think because they're not overly sweet yeah i think they, these would be good with they're, coffee they're very as well. dry you yeah. probably wouldn't want to eat them without a drink in hand <laughs> <laughs> Bi biscuits i think tend to be that way most of the time yeah, but yeah these these are no exception to that yes yeah but they're yeah i mean they have a good flavor so these are the original this is the original ones we and then we'll have to try the chocolate ones later i guess so we have our morning light I smell the rosemary in there. If you give it a smell, you smell I the do. rosemary. Yeah. I do. And it smells a little bit like maybe it's the cassia in it, but I smell cranberry. It's the black currant, probably. Oh, black currant. Yeah, current. there's black okay. currant in there. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a orangey rosy color. Yeah. Oh, and we both have our matching mugs. Yeah, there we go. Our Westmoreland <laughs> green mugs that were a Christmas These gift. are the official Westmoreland County Community College mugs that were given as a gift, right? I don't think they're official in that they were not from the <laughs> campus store. They were a gift from our dean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think the rosemary hits you first. Yeah, I like this tea. I mean, this is a good one. I don't drink it all the time, and it isn't available all the time. So we try to savor it being a savory tea. <laughs> so if you're thinking like that it's going to be extremely savory, like, you know, 
chicken gravy. It's not. It's not. It's yeah. not. It it is it is tea. It is tea first and foremost. Um, don't let that scare you off if you've never had a tea that is more savory. I wouldn't add any sugar to this. I think that wouldn't taste very good. But if you are someone who drinks your tea without sugar all the time, this is pretty delightful. Yeah, without any sugar at all. If you like sugar in your tea, I don't think it would ruin it. But, you you know, again, it it would be a different experience a little bit to have. It, yeah, but. and I think with the rosemary and the the black currant notes in here, I, it would taste really good with breakfast. Yeah. Especially if you had. I like to drink this in the morning and it's, it's called morning light. Yeah. <laughs> Interestingly. Really so. Like a hot savory breakfast. Yeah. You know, like sausage and eggs or something. Or if you're like me, Thanksgiving leftovers the next morning <laughs> in a bowl. <laughs> as your breakfast the morning after on black how, Friday. how can you go wrong with some black currant and rosemary along with that too right oh so yeah you know yeah this would also be a really good secret ingredient in a cranberry relish so should we should we try a biscuit yeah let's try a biscuit with, with the tea one of the regular yeah. biscuits here and i'm gonna dunk up camera so you can watch that it it does not really drip a whole lot. I, I hope not because you don't want to get that on your keyboard, right? Yes. So wow, it didn't it. drip at all. No Mine, drips. Zero. No drips. How could it be? But it is softened and moistened where I dunked it. It softens very quickly. Mm -hmm. Just a straight in and straight back out kind of dunk. Yeah, and... but it's actually... And that was no surprising crumbs. to me. Like I'm shaking this. Look at that. No, no crumbs, drips. no drips. So if you are a um, someone who is going to be concerned about crumbs and drips, but wants to eat cookies with your tea, highly recommend not dripping. No crumbs. Shall we try a chocolate one? Sure. Yeah. So these are the chocolate ones. They're a little darker in color, just from the cocoa. In so them. I'm going to try this first without dipping it, okay. just to see. It's pretty good with the tea, I think. You know what? It's really, it tastes more chocolatey when it's with wet. With the tea, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really get any crumbs in the tea or anything. Mm -hmm. We live in the modern era, I in think. In the modern that... era. <laughs> Speaking of the modern era and taking liberties with things, you know, I was thinking about D2L and how sometimes when you want to have really nice pictures on your D2L shell, you want something that's royalty free because you don't want to be stealing someone else's intellectual property just to stick it in your D2L shell to make it look pretty. Well, I found a website called unsplash.com and I'm going to screen share that for you. And uh, so if you go to unsplash.com, you can search for any topic you want and find unlicensed or license-free or royalty-free photos. You don't need an account and you can just download them and use them as you see fit. So if we were gonna make a D2L shell for our podcast, we could look for pictures. Let's see if we can find some spilling the tea. Oh, spilling the tea, she's gossiping on the phone. <laughs> That's funny. There's tea spilled all over around the cup of tea. Yeah. Oh, that's definitely spilled. Definitely spilled. <laughs> 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 but, you know, you can find all sorts of things. And another thing that I learned about in one of the classes I took here a couple semesters ago, I learned about a product that we all have access to through our Adobe license, um, Adobe Express. And Adobe Express is a web-based tool that you can use to make images as well. You just go to new.express.adobe.com and you would sign in using your Westmoreland account. Uh, you know, sign in as Google. And For then, the creative cloud stuff, right? Yes. Yep. But that what works. I've noticed here is really cool is they've got access to their AI tool. So you can generate 
text effects or images from just typing a prompt. We go to this generate image button. We can- Can you give it a prompt We then? can give it a prompt <laughs> and create an image from Adobe Firefly's AI. Oh. In a red mug with steam coming, steam coming off the mug and a vase of flowers on the table. And uh, we can choose our style of image that we're going to generate. That example here. And then it will generate an image. That's pretty amazing. So this is another place for royalty-free images. So let me share with you just a little bit of what um, some of my course shells look like so you can see how I'm using these images. And... So each of these is a document that the students would need to read for lab. So this one is our intro and our safety procedures. But as you can see, I found a picture of somebody putting on a glove and wearing a lab coat. And it just, it makes the document look a little more interesting. Yeah, yeah. It makes it look like a website you actually want to read. Right, right, yeah. Um, I've I've done things like that with images for every one of these lab activities. So environmental sample. Oh, look at that! Because they use swabs. Yeah, to, I like um, that. To collect things. So was now, that this one was an AI image? That's what I wondered. Did you generate this image with? Yeah. So I told it to generate an image of um, long-handled cotton swabs. Oh. Because that's what we use for the environmental sampling in class. And as you see in the video thumbnail, you know, that's that's can see that. They yep. Use. Yep. So the rest of these images are not. So was that generated using the Adobe tool then? Yes, the one on this top this image yep. above where it says environmental sampling. Yeah, that's what I, I made remember. that using Adobe Express. Okay. Um, and I just created a template for the the width of a, a page and the height that I thought a good header image would be. And then I could just generate images straight into that template. And I knew they'd always fit and look good. Okay. Yeah. And the rest of these photos are not necessarily from Unsplash. Some of them I took myself. So they're not great examples. Right, right. But this the header image here. And if we go to X, so for lab five, we have the topic intro to chemistry. So I just went to Unsplash, grab that image. But then when I have a new topic, I put another header image down so that they realize that the topic has changed. So since the elements are the building blocks, we've got the, uh, little wooden blocks that have the names of periodic of elements you like that and so then i got another image here because i have another topic very nice i like that and and that really makes it easy to do that to be able to use the adobe express or the unsplash yeah. for this so that's great so i guess i should give credit for all of these ideas from <laughs> unsplash and adobe express to alan lake because it was his class that i learned all this in well i think that about wraps it up for us today have a terrific day, everybody. Thank you for joining us.